Hey there! Every month, Annie has a call with our Path365 members and answers their questions. She tackles a wide range of topics from what to do with big emotions, what kinds of tips and advice she has for addressing difficult situations, how to deal with cravings, and so much more. Listen in as she does some real-life coaching for our Path members. The first question is really all about avoiding cravings. And here's the thing. So we are currently in the part of the path called the pause. And in the pause, although I understand that some of you feel really resistant to maybe drinking at all, and that's fine. And you get to do what you want to do. But in the pause, the idea is that we're kind of trying to stop the cycle. All right. So there's a cycle that happens. And there was another question. I'm going to answer both at the same time. And this question was, uh, why is it <laughs> that when I fully understand what alcohol is doing to my body and mind, and I know I need ASAP, does my drinking become more? Here's the thing. Your drinking becomes more as soon as you want to stop. Something really bizarre happens inside of our brains when we decide I need to change this, but we don't yet know how, and we don't yet know we have the same feeling around alcohol that we've always had, okay? The main thing that is a problem with how we look at changing behavior, and we're gonna talk specifically about changing our drinking behavior, is this. The science is very, very clear, and this is science that has come out, and it's been well-researched within the last three to four years. And it's come out from all sorts of different universities, Stanford being one of them, Dr. B.J. Fogg, um, uh, Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett. And they are not only doing studies on what they're studying, but they're looking back at all the studies that have kind of been done on these sorts of things, something like James Clear and Atomic Habits. They all are coming to this one conclusion. And this conclusion is the reason that we stay stuck. Okay. The conclusion is this. They have debunked the idea that if you just get a certain length of time of doing the behavior or not doing the behavior, it will become easy or effortless. So if you just do 30 days or 60 days or 90 days or a year or three years, at some point in time, that will mean that behavior will stick. They're saying that's not true. That's not true. So what is true, the only thing that is actually causal, meaning will cause a new behavior to stick, and we're talking the new behavior right now is not drinking, is how you feel in relation to that behavior. And you can know this is true because if you think of something that you do in your life every day that is good for you, and it's a habit that you have, I am willing to bet that you feel good about doing that thing. You don't feel like you're missing out. You don't feel deprived. You don't feel upset. You don't feel sad. You feel good. You're like, this is what I do. This is who I am. It is, it is even taken on some form of identity, right? And if you think of something that you haven't been able to change your behavior, chances are you feel bad in relation to that or, or the majority bad, more negative feelings than positive feelings. And so what all the new science is saying is the key thing to sustaining a behavior change, which not drinking is a behavior change, especially if you're like me and had been drinking for decades, the key thing is how you feel in relationship to that behavior. So that's why we talk about these emotion-based goals. That's why we're going into this with this whole rewiring your brain so that you feel differently. When you make a commitment, like I'm going to drink less, but you don't feel differently about it, your brain is like trying to have this last hurrah. And, and it actually gets to where you want the thing more, which is why we actually suggest very strongly the pause. And what the pause is, is simply like, look, you're going into investigation mode. You're showing up, you're coming to these calls, you're absorbing the content, but you're letting yourself off the hook right now for your drinking. Trusting the process and trusting that you will start to feel differently. Now, I understand that this is literally one of the most impossible concepts to conceptualize. Because if you think about it like this, you cannot imagine feeling nauseous when you don't feel nauseous. 
You cannot imagine feeling hungover when you don't feel hungover. You also can't imagine feeling well when you feel hungover. You can't imagine not feeling in love when you do feel in love, right? And if we think of this like a relationship, so we think of our relationship with alcohol like a relationship, right? So you get into a new relationship, the person is attractive, you've got all this chemistry, it's super fun, they make you laugh, everything's great. And then you go and you move in with the person and all of a sudden you start to find out all of these other things about them, your feelings are going to change toward that person. Your feelings are going to change, but you can't imagine that when you're in the emotional phase that you're in. So the path is in a way, and especially the pause part of the path, it's asking for a lot of trust because we're telling you, look, if you go through this content and if you go through it sequentially, you will actually feel different about this substance. And the question is, how do I handle cravings? Yes, we have tactics to handle cravings. You know, there are things, especially when we get into the take a break content that are very specific meditations to handle cravings. But the reality is the best way to handle a craving is to change how you feel about the substance. I don't crave motor oil because there's nothing about motor oil that makes me want to drink it. I also really dislike papaya. I don't crave papaya. I don't crave alcohol. I don't want alcohol. There's nothing about alcohol that makes me want to drink it, despite literally feeling like alcohol was one of the most important things in my life. It was right up there with like my kids and my husband from a, how much I wanted to do it and how important I believed it was in my life. It, it was a, a feeling of I don't think I can survive without this or what is even the point of living if I can't be drinking. That's how serious my desire was. It was like, if you go back to that relationship, like this is the relationship that I would, like this is, this is my ride or die. This, I would, you know, do anything, put myself through any kind of like terrible circumstances to be with this person, right? because I still felt the feelings. But if you go through this process, and that's why people, it's hard to imagine, it's hard to conceptualize when you're first starting it. But when you go through this process and you show up every day and you watch those videos, which are not very long, you will start to feel differently. And when you feel differently, that is the best possible way, not only to overcome cravings, but the best possible way for this to stick. Now you need to feel differently really on three different levels, okay? You need to feel differently about the substance itself and we're gonna do that. You also need to feel differently about some of these beliefs that we have in our society, right? If we go into living an alcohol-free lifestyle and we feel um, as if we are deprived, if we feel like we're missing out, if we feel like we're on the outside of things, if we feel like it's hard for us to have fun, if we feel like we're not normal, which is by the way, probably one of the most toxic beliefs you can have in this conversation, this idea that you're somehow not normal or that you're broken because you drink too much. And we unpack each one of these beliefs methodically. But if you go into it feeling that way, the chances of you going back to drinking are really, really high. But if you go into it feeling like, man, this is kind of a badass decision. This is kind of like having a deadly disease and being told it's in remission. This is kind of like, you know, me being able to make the most health conscious choice that I've ever made. This is like getting a new lease on life. I feel proud and excited. And like, I want to shout it from the rooftops, which I know is really hard to understand at this stage where you're at right now. But through that process, that is how you don't crave anymore. Okay. That is how you don't crave. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to see how this naked mind can help you on your personal health and wellness journey and want to learn more, go to this naked mind podcast.com to learn what your next best step is. Again, that's thisnakedmindpodcast.com. 
We have all of our free resources, programs, social links, and more available for you there. Plus, if you have your own naked life story to share, you can submit it there as well. Until next week, stay curious.